Hi, everyone. I'm Daniel Ord, and thank you so much for having me at the Tokopedia CX First Summit. It's great to be here. Now, I live in a small wine growing region here in Germany, and I'd like to show that to you. One moment, and I will share my screen. We have pictures today. There we are. Now, what you're looking at here is a very typical photograph of this region, which is called the Rheingau. And it, they've been growing wine in the Rheingau for over a thousand years. So there are a lot of wineries around. And the cool part about having so many wineries around is many of these wineries have a restaurant attached to it where you can go and have lunch or dinner. So we have many choices of places where to go. Another cool thing about my life is my mother-in-law lives just down the hill from us. So I see her quite often. And in German, I call her mama. And let me show you a picture of mama now. I have her here. There we are. There's mama and I out at some kind of outing. Now, a couple of weeks ago, my mama and I decided to go out and do some grocery shopping and run some errands. And as we were out and about, I saw a really cute wine restaurant and I knew we hadn't been there before. By the way, can I show you a picture of a common looking or typical looking wine restaurant here? There you go. That's a local restaurant or wine restaurant here in the Rheingau. So I said, Mama, we've never been here before. Why not? Should we try it? And she said, nine, nine. No, no, Dan. Uh, last time I was here, the washrooms weren't clean. By the way, that was in 1986. But clearly, we weren't going there. So we continue on our outing. And we come across, you guessed it, another wine restaurant. So I said, OK, Mama, we've not tried this one. How do you think or what do you feel about this one? And she said, no, no, nine, nine. We're not going here. This is for tourists. We're locals. We don't go to the tourist restaurants. Now, the owner might disagree because the owner is going to be thrilled to have the business. But for her, this is a place we would not go. And you probably guessed as we carried on our journey that we came across, yes, another wine restaurant. So I looked at this one. I said, OK, Mama, I know we haven't been to this one either. So why don't we try this one sometime? And she said, no, no, nine, nine. The last time I came here, they were rude to my husband. Now, her husband, Hans, passed away in 2006. That was a long time ago. Now, what you can see here is that my mother-in-law, my mama, had a perception of each of the wine restaurants that I had pointed to. And the term perception is really important here because whether positive or negative, her perception is her reality. And it really impacts her future behavior. She either says nice things about that place or not. She either recommends we go there or not. And that's something that customer experience professionals work on every day. This is really important. They work to improve the perceptions of people like us who are interacting with them, whether that's a hospital, whether that's a concert hall, whether that's a grocery store, it doesn't matter. They're working to improve our perceptions because they know the customer's perception is the customer's reality. And it's going to impact the customer's future behavior with things like recommending you or not, saying nice things about you or not, and honoring you with their trust, which is something that's built over time. But I have good news for you here. There is a very useful model that describes how customers perceive an experience across three different levels. You can see it on the screen here now. And what I'd like to do is walk you through this model from the bottom up and explain what each of these level means or each level means individually. Now, to explain the levels, let me share another story from my mama. She needed a mobile phone plan. She doesn't like calling contact centers. So she came to us and said, could you please contact the mobile phone provider and help me get a new mobile phone plan. And that's what I did. So here we go. We're going to start with level one. At level one, I have a goal. I have a job to be done. I need to get a new mobile phone plan for my mother-in-law. So I call them. I talk to the agent. The agent says, of course, Mr. Ord, we have absolutely the, a plan for people like your mother-in-law, people that don't use the high-tech features, that don't use a lot of data, and so on. And it's not very expensive as well. 
And that is absolutely great because I accomplished my goal. Level one is meeting needs. It's helping the customer accomplish their goal. Um, as an organization, getting level one right is really foundational. You have to be able to help people get their jobs done. For example, if you're a restaurant and you serve bad food, I don't care how beautiful your location is or how wonderful your decor is, you're never going to create a positive perception with your customer. So level one, help the customer accomplish their goal. Let's go to level two. At level two, we ask a different question. We ask, how easy or hard was it as a customer to get what I needed to achieve my goal? Now, in the example I just used, I called the contact center and it went really great. There were no long push button menus. I didn't wait too long. The agent that I spoke to knew what I wanted. They did not make me repeat myself. They didn't transfer me around and they gave me a solution. So if later on you were to ask me, Dan, was it easy or hard to get what you needed for your mother-in-law? I'm gonna tell you, wow, it was quite easy. Um, we all know the horror stories. I mean, contact centers, definitely. We call, we go through some push one, push two, push 58 and on and on. We wait a long time. We listen to miserable music on hold. We get an agent who then tells us we've reached the wrong place. We have to go here, we have to go there. That makes life very difficult and makes life very frustrating. And increasingly today, customers count on you to help make their life easier. So that's level two. That's making sure we work to make life easier for the customer. Let's go to level three. We're at the top of the pyramid now. And we ask perhaps what is the most important question here, which is, how do I feel about the experience that I just went through? What does our customer feel about the experience they just went through? Now you can see the word enjoyable here. Enjoyable is kind of a catch-all word for human emotion. And we just have to remember that human emotion comes in many, many, many flavors. We could have joy, we could have frustration, we could have irritation, we could have sadness. So when you look at enjoyable, just keep in mind, it's a one word capture of many different kinds of human emotions. Now for the call I placed to this contact center, I have to tell you, I felt really reassured. I, I just, he was so clear when he explained it, it felt like just the right thing. It was easy to get, my goodness, I just felt reassured. And I also felt really relieved simply because I know reaching out to a contact center sometimes isn't the easiest thing to do. Now take a moment, let's try a different example. Pretend you're going to the dentist. And maybe you're a person who's afraid to go to the dentist. So it, it doesn't matter as much that you know the dentist is competent to take care of your teeth. Your dentist, let's say, is highly competent. They can meet your needs. They can get your teeth done. But what about the fear you have? What you're looking for if you have fear is you're looking for how well the dentist recognizes that fear. Maybe they touch your shoulder and say, it's gonna be okay. Or maybe they explain to you step-by-step step exactly what they're doing and what comes next and roughly how long it's gonna take. In other words, they're aware of that, of your human emotion and try and alleviate that a little bit. You know what's interesting about that top level? The research seems to show that about 50% or more of how a customer is gonna remember their interaction with you comes through that emotion comes through that emotion. I think that's incredible. So a CX professional looks at the customer experience that a customer goes through with you through these, through these three different levels. And let me just repeat them one more time. Level one is foundational. The shampoo has to clean your hair the, and make it smell good, hopefully. The, the website has to answer the question. But level one on its own is not enough. We also have to consider how easy or hard is it for the customer to get their job done? And at the top of the pyramid, we're looking at emotion. We're looking at the emotional responses customers have to that interaction with us. So interesting. Now I'm gonna stop the share here for a second and tell you one last story here. And I hope it's helpful to you. Last year, my mama was diagnosed with breast cancer. So over the past many months, we've been to hospitals and clinics and rehabilitation areas and so forth. And believe me, I've been watching how they treat her, how they interact with her, how the place works. And I'm seeing the CX pyramid being brought to life 
over and over and over and over. In fact, I used a lot of these clinic visits to do some experience design research for a healthcare client, just looking at the three different levels and what she went through. In our mystery shopper work, we also use these three levels. When we design a mystery shopper, in many cases, we look at, did the customer achieve their goal? How easy or hard was it for them to achieve their goal? And how did the customer feel at the end? So that's a very powerful way to use the pyramid as well. I love the pyramid because it's simple, it's powerful, and it's easy for people to use. And I'd like to close my talk today by saying this. It makes a lot of sense that doing more of the things customers like and less of the things they don't is going to be good for your business. But for me, the cool thing about designing and creating these great customer experiences isn't just that it's good for business, although that really matters. I think it's very often the right thing to do for another human being. So thank you again for having me and all the very best for your event. Have a good one, guys. Bye.